So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about data virtualization in the energy and oil and gas industry. So typically under the analytics vision of TIPCO, most of the use cases in energy industry fall under Spotfire. Now, typically what a lot of people don't think about when going for Spotfire is that sometimes the data needs to be organized because it's coming from many different sources and needs a little bit of data management in order to make that happen in the high velocity abstract. So what we're going to really do today is kind of focus in this first area of the data analytics vision as we move towards trying to help you build out that Spotfire use case. And of course, there's many different tools in the entire TIPCO spectrum that's going to help you with things such as data science and machine learning, being able to operate, build operational models and systems, and to be able to take this to an alerting and predictive and prescriptive vision. So jumping back into the data management side, typically when we're bringing this data in the Spotfire in the first place, there's many different sources that are in many different formats. For example, if we look at the PPDM standard or comparing that to a Whitsnell standard, there's two completely different built ways. One of them is a relational model. The other one is an XML non-relational model. And of course, we have many different sources, whether they're hosted in a cloud or SaaS option or hosted locally in a database. And so the goal sometimes is to be able to pull all of this together to build a centralized view. Now, some companies try and attack this using a data warehouse. Of course, there are trade-offs to doing that. One, you're storing the data twice and paying to do it twice. And two, typically data warehouses take time to build and are can be very costly. So the workflow that we're going to kind of discuss today is being able to take that data and virtualize a unique and single version of true data source through data virtualization. We're going to talk about in a future demonstration how you could actually clean that data and manage that data within TIPCO Clarity and of course expose that data to Spotfire. So in my demonstration today what I'm going to do is actually show us connecting to some WITSML files in data virtualization and how we would actually take that and create a data connection within Spotfire. In this example, what we are going to do is to take a sample file and connect it. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start in my scratch folder and create a brand new data source. So you can see here there's many different data sources, whether your data is held in a server, it's a, if it's a file such as an XML, there's even the option to pull directly from a web service using REST or any other protocols that that web service may interact with. So not only do, can you pull from these files that are stored locally, but you can also take them and directly from that web service without having to store them anywhere. So what we're going to do is I'm going to point to the path of these folders, which is in my C drive. It's going to be in users, administrator. And so once I've navigated to that particular set of files that I want to open, I'll be able to actually pull in some data in the data virtualization. There's a lot of different ones, so we finally found that folder. I'm going to go ahead and create that source. Once I name it, we'll just call it our log files. And we're going to notice there's multiple files, so it doesn't support just one. So if you have your data uh, summarized by month or by year or by any sort of time frame, you're able to connect to all of those. I'm going to head and click Next finish that and you're going to see that data source has already been created in data virtualization's desktop studio. Now notice all the different files have been created with their definition folders. So what we're going to do from here is actually take all of those data sources 
and transform them. Because the problem with WTML files is because they're in a non-relational uh, model, most BI tools aren't going to be able to read them or any other reporting software. So not only can you actually pull that data in, but you can transform it all within the tool. So once we take that information, we're going to go ahead and create a new transformation. We'll just select this transformation method, which is just taking an XML file and making it relational. We're going to keep it in that same folder, and it will be log transform. And we're going to choose which ones. So that's going to be our nine right here. And click finish. So now you can see that I actually have all of those now expanded into some sort of source. So we have all of those different data types that can now be mapped out into a target source. So when I look at this example here, such as my well bore, you can see that I've already gone through the process of mapping those out. So when I have that, all I need to do is actually publish this data source. So I can take that view that I've already created and publish it to my composite server. And essentially what I'm doing by publishing this is allowing me to expose this data to any source that is able to accept any sort of server connection, such as Spotfire. You can see that I have these published sources here, which all I need to do is when I go into Spotfire, I could just add it like another data source and select the composite information server connection. So when I connect, we can see I have my database that I want. Click OK, and it would be just like pulling in a regular SQL server. I can take in my WSML data. I can even do multiple data sources and see all of that information before me. So when I do that, we'll just call it our WSML data. Import that data source, and when I click OK, we're now going to see that I have all the data available for me, and I can work with it as if it were any other data in Spotfire, building charts, working with the recommended visualization engine, uh, doing advanced analytics such as the Klein curve analysis, or any other types of contour plotting that's necessary, or even geolocation. So with that, this is what we've talked about today, is taking data sources that aren't stored in a regular format, which you find in a lot of the energy data sources out there, and we've been able to transform it into Spotfire in a matter of minutes. So, to recap what we talked about today, we talked about how we could use the TIPCO Data Virtualization Server in order to bring in our data just like it were a regular data connection. So that, on top of any other things we can talk about, is that data virtualization cannot be limited only to Spotfire, but can be limited to any other TIPCO analytic products, such as the ones you see here, or any other products that use any sort of server connection. We can cache this data if you want any sort of performance enhancements, or it could be the latest real-time data. The advantage of not storing this data is that when you ask for it, it pulls it directly from the source at that time. Uh, we talked about how there's already a connector with Spotfire in database, and typically where I see it, we mentioned a lot of those services, whether they're web or SaaS applications, uh, or anything that communicates using WITSML or any other standard that's going to make it easier for you to organize that data. So that's all we have on TIPCO data virtualization in the oil and gas industry today.